Well, I think I've um, addressed that question here and there during a... I, I think there's a need to understand the self, to value the self. When we value the self, we can respect the self. In, there's a song from our, our Ferry album that came out in 2006. It's called Omojunri, uh, and it goes, they say we're free and colonization, we're still slaves. Economically, we're still slaves. Politically, we're still slaves. Philosophically, we're still slaves. We keep borrowing everything. I think when the colonizer came here and showed us shiny things and new ideas, and it was good that maybe there was a time, it was, maybe it was, good, you know, it was a good time for rebirth. Maybe there was a good time for rebirth. But we shouldn't have just thrown everything out and embraced whatever they brought wholesale. And even if we did that and it was an error, why are we not able just to retrace our steps? Because there's a lot of great importance, I mean great and important tools in our traditional wisdom, in our traditional ways of knowing that we can use to improve ourselves. I always like to say, every, and it's been proven by anthropologists, every society, whatever problem you see in that society, the solution is in that society too. It is there. You don't have to go abroad to find that solution. If there's a disease or something that's aff afflicting people here, the solution can be found here. For example, with malaria, which is very laughable. Malaria is a huge global business. There's a multi-billion dollar or trillion dollar business. So malaria is not going to go away. <laughs> because, because to solve malaria is very easy. Eh? They won't like what is here, what I'm saying. Eh? But it's a huge, huge industry. But to solve malaria, we know that we just have to prevent, to prevent it. We can prevent it. And even if prevention is not doing it 100%. There are solutions in our environment, which we don't really talk about. We are just buying drugs by these big drug companies that are good at lobbying governments. They are good at lobbying uh, power brokers. Uh, and, but, but, but see, you can't blame, they are doing their business. That's business. I used to be in business too. They are doing their business. What are we doing for ourselves? When we ourselves don't even have any value for ourselves, for the wisdom of our of, of our traditions, when we don't have that, when we're not ready to embrace the knowledge that was always here. And so what I put in my music is this wisdom, the idea that we can be masters of this environment again. And I, for me, it's important that I'm not going to waste my energy on people of my generation or the older ones. We are probably too hard to bend now, many of us. But the young people, we can still bend them. We can still talk to them. They can still find a way. And I keep, then the first thing I say is, learn to know yourself and respect yourself and value yourself. Yeah? And then learn to respect your own environment and the wisdom in your environment. The perfect African, the one that will be seen by the rest of the world as an equal partner in the world. When they say there's a global village and they bring all different people in the world together. And they say, ah, oh, this is an African. And you want them to respect you? That African must be a perfect amalgam of traditional wisdom and modern knowledge. It must be a perfect combination. Eh? An amalgam is a very good word I like because it means that it's well fused, well fused of traditional wisdom and modern knowledge. What most of us are chasing after is just this modern knowledge. We want to be as trendy as the West. When they say there's something new that they are doing in the West, if you wake one, next week Nigeria has it. Next week, Nigeria, but we haven't solved our power problems. We haven't solved the fact that we don't even know, we can't even deal with our own garbage. Garbage disposal, we can't, simple things, we are, we are not, we are, but we are, want to be trendy with the world. We want to be one step, in fact, we want to be in step with, with America. We haven't taken time out to, to, you know, to say, who are we? How do we want to do things? It's the same question that we keep asking Nigeria. They say, uh, when you say restructure, people in government are so scared. They think you're talking about partitioning Nigeria. No, restructuring means, what is the philosophy of Nigeria? What is your country? What is the driving philosophy of this country? Have we sat down to decide? Because what we've been running this country on is still what those who put it together, those who put it together might have done it for some reason, maybe for their own business reasons. But I think Nigeria is a fantastic idea. I think the way it is, you may, when you hear news of people in the North who are, some of them are illiterate, they are religious fundamentalists, and you hear these things and it turns you off. But have you met the ones in the North who are not like that? who are moderate, moderate Christians, moderate Muslims, eh? who are forward-thinking, 
who are fans of Beautiful Nubia, I have Fulani men who are fans of my music. You will not believe it. Yes? And I've, they've written, some of them have written me. There are people like that. But the news you keep hearing is this skewed news. This lie that is meant to keep us apart and separate. The ones you hear on radio, the Igbo that you hear, are the ones that are always looking for trouble. The ones that are always saying bitter, negative things. But I know many, many Igbo people, young and young people too. Many of the people at the show last night were Igbo people. One of them came up after the show and started saying, I don't even know half of what you are saying, <laughs> but I just love your music. I just love you. I just, something about you I love. There's something about you. I said, because what you love is the common humanity. You can see this. I'm saying something that resonates with you. So I think it's important for us to learn to appreciate the best of what our ancestors were able to do here. That wisdom, take it and blend it with our new modern knowledge and create something really, really powerful. Yeah. We are trying, in that song, that Omojuri, I said, we are trying to build from the top down. The, we build from ground up. Anybody knows that. Now, that's common sense. That anything you want to build must be built from the ground. We have not even built Nigeria from the ground. The British gave it. And I often think it's a gift. It's not a curse. They've cobbled us together. They've given it. And we have not done much with that gift. We've just sat on the, its destruction. That's what we've done. We've sat there just taken from this entity. We have not even ever loved this country. Because we don't want to. Because we say we are Yoruba. But when we create that Yoruba nation, we still won't love it. Because we haven't learned how to love our country. Because once we start Yoruba nation, then they will start with Ami Jebu. Ijebu doesn't marry Ibadan. Yes, I grew up with that. That some people say, ah, we can't. Ijebu, ah, oh, Lefe Jebu. And say, they are Yoruba. <laughs> These are the people who want to form, they want to form one nation. People who are still like that. People who still look down on the Jeshas. Those people, low class Yoruba. People who still think like that want to form a nation. So, if, we, any, if you cut it down to Ibadan, I'm telling you, if you say, let us say Ibadan nation, they will still fight. Then they will say, some people are indigenous Ibadan. The rest of you, at only why you came from somewhere else. So. <laughs> <laughs> the core Yoruba are the ones that live in Agbokoju, I mean, they will start that, that this is what they're going to start. Human beings are good at doing this, at dividing. Unity is a lofty idea. Working together in community is a lofty idea. We should reach for those lofty ideas, not for the simple, easy things. We should learn to love this place and see it as a gift that we can build. We can build it. This new generation, they are going to do it. I, I believe strongly in them. They may look like they are lost right now, but I know that they and the ones after them, they will know they have not... Oh, there was a child last night at the show. A small child, a young child, maybe like, I don't know, maybe she's like 8, 10. And I saw her throughout the show, she was dancing, jumping. So I called her out. You know, every move, every move I made, she copied it. She just, ah, it was beautiful. We had like magic. I'm here, 55-year-old man. This is like an 8-year-old or... It, and everything I did, she did. I said, this, but this, you see, people don't, it's just us dancing. But what I got from that is that this is dynamism. This is intelligence. This is extreme intelligence. Our people are very intelligent. Why can't we use this intelligence to build ourselves? A generation is coming that's going to do it. And we have to be saying the right things to them. And so I say it in my music. And I beg those who write to please let us start to do these things with our work. It's, it's, and this is, I'm begging because I think it's important that we do this. Because it's unfair what we have done to our people here. We have destroyed generations of our people. I don't think it's fair that a child should be born in an environment and not have the hope of living a good life. We should be planning for our children. We should be saying that the lives we have lived, those who are coming after us, shouldn't live that life. We should be saying that. What's the purpose of our lives? If we cannot leave this place better than we met it, if we can't say, ah, when we are gone, Nigeria will be a fantastic place. We, would, we have done the work. Yeah, so I'm doing that work with my music. And I hope other people in the arts and other people in the science, whatever you are, whether you're a university lecturer, whether you, whatever you are doing, can we start to use creativity? Can we start to do things that will build that? Not just for our own tummy, not just for our own families, for, for our own selfish needs. Can we start to do things for the community? Put the community before the self. 
put the community before the self. Societies that grow, people respect their communities, they lift their communities. They don't think about how to just feed the self, they think of how to bless the community with their talent, with their knowledge, with whatever money they have. You build your community. And, and so this is how I see it, and this is what I think could be the path for us going forward. Oh, 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 oh.